Uh, my pleasure to have Dr. Vahid Qureshi. He is a second time entrepreneur who sold his company recently to Citrix, Zen Price, on the mobile platform. Wait, it's a pleasure to have you. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Um, what I wanted to ask you and a lot of other entrepreneurs in the ecosystem who want to learn from you is, uh, I'm sure uh, this is a little bit easier the second time around for you. Yeah, absolutely. You know, as you go through your entrepreneurial journey, every time when you do it, when you repeat the process, you start a new business, it gets easier and easier. And actually the reason is very simple because number one, you learn a lot more from your mistakes and your successes, but also you get your network grows, you know, than people you know, and those people ultimately become part of your extended team. So you have people in technology, in business, in sales, marketing, and these people help you. And as your network grows, you can always pick out the very best to come and help you in very particular areas that you're working in. So you say you're wiser and you're well connected, but you still have to address the pain point. So the fundamental question remains the same as, how do you go and find that pain point? And then bigger question is, you know, finding the right team to address the pain point. Right. So, so the first problem is what you have to do. I mean, look, your ecosystem, your, your colleagues, your network is not going to solve those problems for you. You still have to come up with the right idea. You still have to come up with the team. You still have to raise the funds. You still have to build the product. And you still have to take it to market. What they do is your network just comes in and helps you as you are doing those things. But you have to do it they will just facilitate it or help you a little bit along the way. So, As you're building the team, uh, how important uh, it is to have the right kind of advisors on your board? Believe me, people are it, okay? The difference between a successful and a not successful company are the people because they can make a huge difference, whether they are your direct employees or your co-founders or very early employees or whether they are your advisors. They all play a very critical role because they all themselves are accomplished individuals, so they basically keep you from sidetracking. You know, it's, it's kind of like you know, you're driving on a road, on a very windy road, and sometimes it's hard to see when you're turning. So they basically help you stay on, the, on, on course. On the journey of building a startup to its fruition, uh, I'm sure, you know, like you said, it's a little bit easier the second time, but were there one or two particular challenges which you didn't anticipate and they came and you addressed it? There are too many of these, it's all about un unanticipated challenges, right? So um, there were many challenges, right? So, I mean, I'll, I'll, I can share some of them with you. You know, we started in the mobility space very early on. So for example, in 2004, you know, there was no uh, iPhone or iPad, you know, there were very few mobile platforms that were available and those platforms were not very easy to work with. So we, we, you know, we had lots of problems. And then, you know, when the new platforms came around, we had to retool ourselves. You know, we were working on uh, one kind of platforms, but then all of a sudden, you know, when the iPhone, for example, when it came, you know, we were all very inspired by it. But imagine now that I have to reteach my team a brand new set of skills. We had, but we had to do it very, very quickly, right? So, so that was, uh, you know, those are not easy things to do. But if you can do them, then you have a very good chance of being successful. But if you look at the other way, you had no choice but to do it because that in, it came as a blessing in disguise for you. It, it did actually. You know, as, as I always say, you know, we were in the Wild West and all of a sudden, you know, this device comes that changes enterprise mobility. I mean, if you, if you, if you remember in 2007, when Apple brought out the iPhone, for example, it was like as if today, if someone were to say that, you know, IBM is getting into the car business. It's very unusual, you know. Nobody could imagine that Apple will bring out an iPhone. But the point I'm trying to make is that at that time, you know, all of a sudden you have to change what you're doing and go into a totally unknown area. I mean, look, I was not familiar with the, the uh, you know, the development environment on the, on, on the iPhone, but we had to learn it very, very quickly. So I think the key is to not only identify it, but to act on it and to act on it quickly. I think that's the key, which sometimes people don't do and then, you know, they have challenges. So here's a, a, a question that I, uh, I think a lot of people need to be, uh, you, need, you need to address for a lot of people is, when the technology is uh, evolving at such a pace, does your, the profile of your technology team decreases in age? Yes and no. I mean, uh, I mean, if you look at um, if you look at the kind of problems we were solving. So, for example, you know, we were not building a cool app like a game. We were actually building very hardcore mobility platforms for enterprises, right, to protect their data, and. Uh, to do some of those things, you really have to have solved those problems in another context before, right? 
So, um, so for example, we did bring in some, uh, you know, some, uh, you know, people who were fresh out of college who had some great ideas, especially on the usability. But to, to do some of the hardcore stuff, stuff in security and data protection and data management on mobile devices, we needed people who had a lot of experience. The two challenges where I think you came out really well. One is, you know, you actually say it's on building the revenue. That's where the rubber meets the road. And the other is the final. Uh, 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 hurdle is uh, exiting it out successfully. Uh, both happen uh, for a very good cause. Um, what we wanted to learn is if you can address both the issues, uh, the sales part, you know, how difficult or how easy is it to go and address this particular problem? Well, if you build good products that are solving a customer's problem, people would want to try your products. So I remember the very first customer of ours, they bought our product for, and they paid us a thousand dollars. The very first product that they bought. Uh, but the product was a good product, right? So pretty soon what happened was that word started spreading out about our product. And uh, you know, this was around the same time that you know, the iOS and uh, Android phones were taking over the world. So a lot of corporate customers, you know, the CIOs were thinking about, well, how do I solve some of these problems, right? So I think that um, uh, building a good product and then having a very good sales team. So we went out and we actually found a, a very good sales executive who could understand the early nature of the product and take it to market, you know, because early products are not perfect. So, so we were lucky that we got all of those things happening for us. Finally, the exit part. Uh, that's everybody, every entrepreneur's dream. And, but it, it takes a lot more than a good product and a good sales. Yes. It, you know, uh, half of it is either good luck and half of it is, you know, the right strategy that you put in place. So good luck was there with you, but um, you know, can you share some thoughts about the right strategy that one has to focus on? Yeah. So you know, one thing I want to, there's a perception in entrepreneurs that, oh, I must be looking for an uh, exit, right? So don't do that. Just build great products, just execute it, take it to market, Im increase your revenue, and the exit part will happen by itself. So in our case, we were not really looking for an exit. We were, you know, like for example, we got acquired by Citrix. So we actually were meeting them to create a business partnership with them of a go-to-market uh, product, you know, strategy like that. It was not like we went to tell them, hey, please, you know, you should acquire us. It was not that. But what happened was that as a result of that, the moment they saw what we were doing, they realized that if they acquire us, it will really help them in their execution. So, so, so what I'm saying is that don't look for a exit, the exit will happen naturally, but just do a good job executing on your business plan. Uh, finally, I think they say once an entrepreneur, always an entrepreneur. So I'm hoping that there's another one left in you after whenever you, you, know, you decide to do that. So all the best wishes for you for the next one. Well, thank you very much. I mean, look, right now I am uh, I'm the CTO of the mobile platform group at Citrix. And, uh, you know, right now I'm, I'm focused uh, heavily on making sure that we can, uh, you know, take the Zenprise products and integrate them into the Citrix portfolio. And then, you know, we'll see what happens in the future. I will let you know. <laughs> thank you again. Thank you.